out. So let's uh, begin in prayer and then we'll kick off. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to to gather around your word. Lord, we just uh, pray for your Holy Spirit just to have free reign and speak to us through your through the power of your word, Lord, we just uh, thank you for uh, just the opportunity we have to, to gather around it. Lord, we just uh, so grateful that we have a Bible and, and so many people don't. And uh, Lord, we just uh, pray that you would speak to us, help us understand, especially this passage, a lot, um, a lot of details, a lot of things that are uh, hard to understand and complicated. Uh, but Lord, just to give us clarity. Lord, I pray that you'll just speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're in Matthew 24. Uh, we're hoping to fin- finish Matthew uh, by Christmas. <laughs> just to give you the lay of the land. <laughs> and so, uh, we will not get through 24 today. <laughs> this year. <laughs> Uh, we are going to this fall, back in the spring, it, uh, I had this epiphany, I guess. Uh, there's a lot of new people, which is great to see as we look around the room. Uh, and many years ago, we took some time and went through Christianity 101. And so uh, what we're going to do uh, this fall, uh, we'll try it, see how it goes. So the last Thursday of the month, uh, we will cover a topic uh, in Christianity 101. The church has put together a booklet. This is what we believe. And so we'll pick a topic out of there, and we'll go through that as a group. So if it's the last Thursday of the month, and you've, you're like, wow, I don't want to come and... Uh, well, it, it might change because of the teaching rotation. And so, but that's what we're shooting for is the last Thursday. I think there, there's one Thursday, either October or November, we had to move it up uh, because of scheduling and things. But uh, so that's what's going to happen this fall. Christianity 101, go through some basic, what is the Holy Spirit? Uh, you know, what is the Bible? And, and uh, some some basic things about that. So. Before we begin today, uh, we need to start from a certain point uh, before we get too far into the weeds. Um, Who is Matthew writing to? Matthew is writing to a certain group of people. The Jews. They're writing to the Jewish people. So as we read this today... We need to think about that through that lens, that, that Matthew is writing this uh, to the Jewish people. Is the church uh, present as Jesus is, is teaching his disciples here? Where is the church? Hasn't started yet, has it? Okay. So the church hasn't started. We're going to read about uh, a number of times in this chapter, the word elect. So is he talking about the church? Some people are of that opinion. The simplistic answer and where I kind of land, and again, it's just my opinion, I think today's discussion revolves around the Jew. And so uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, And it's just simple Bible interpretation because Matthew is writing to the Jews, and and so uh, so it's my my belief uh, that he's talking to the Jews. But Jim is right; there is the church at play as well. Um, And so uh, the other thing, the other thing to think about too, is when you're when you're trying to understand a passage or a thing. It's good to look at where else in Scripture is this mentioned. And we're going to talk about the tri- tribulation today. And uh, there was a guy, some of you remember the magazine, Israel My Glory. Anybody remember that? So the editor, the guy that used to edit that magazine, he no longer works for them because he came up with a different theory in the tribulation. And he began to ascribe, uh, like, like plagues and famine, and he said, you know, these really aren't God's judgment. These are man-made things. 
The problem is, as you look through the consistency of Scripture, going back even to Exodus and the plagues with Pharaoh, there is some consistency of God's judgment. And, and so he, um, again, that was his opinion. Uh, he, uh, that's not what Israel, my glory, believed. And, uh, and so he, um, he had to step down. But there are, uh, but we need to look at the consistency in the Bible and, and, and things that happen. Uh, um, and you need to keep that in mind. Um, and um, Jesus, uh, the other thing we got to keep in mind, Jesus, his, uh, his, uh, for, his, his coming is foretold in the Old Testament. Where the mistake comes is people see it as one event. And is it one event or two events? It's two events. It's two events. So people were getting confused, and even his disciples, they, they saw Jesus ride in on, on the donkey, and they said, oh, great, this is going to usher in that time when the Old Testament prophets talked about Jesus would come to rule and reign. And this, this is what's going to happen. And so as they have this discussion here in Matthew 24, that's what's in their mind. They think that's, this is what's going to happen now. Jesus is coming. He's going to set up his kingdom. And uh, couldn't be farther from the truth. They, there was this misunderstanding. And so and, and I know as Christians, we look at the Jewish people and say, well, they knew all these prophecies. How did they not understand? Part of the reason is they misinterpreted Jesus coming as one event and not two events. And, and so uh, so just need to keep that in mind. The first time he would come as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. The second time would be to establish his millennial reign. Uh, and it's cool how we're going through this chapter because on Sunday, what is Wes preaching about? What are the signs? Yeah, what are the signs? Uh, and so, uh, real quick, uh, Casey's going to throw up a couple pictures. Uh, these are the pictures I took. Jesus, uh, this is the chapter we're going through today is referred to the, as the Olivet Discord because they are on the Mount of Olives. And so this is a picture of the Mount of Olives. In a minute here, uh, we'll talk about the temple. And so as you're on the Mount of Olives and you look towards this is what is the temple now, but uh, won't, uh, be, won't be in the future. Uh, go to the next one. And so that's the temple, uh, as you see it from the Mount of Olives. And again, it looked really different from uh, back in, in the disciples' day. It looked really different. Uh, remember, in 70 A.D., it was destroyed. Uh, would have been 40 years later after today's conversation. As you look at this floor, these squares are 10 by 12. So they're 10 foot this way, 12 foot this way. Some of the stones on that temple foundation are 40 feet long. So imagine one, two, three, four. And then these squares, they are 12 feet wide. And that's how wide the stones would have been. And they were 12 feet tall. And that curtain, uh, Kirk can correct me, I think it's 10 foot, that black curtain, is 10 or 12 feet, just to give you an idea. What's that? That curtain there is 20? So about half, or about half, you think? Half that curtain? Okay. Okay. I forget the different settings. We've set them up in different places. So. <laughs> but again, that's how high and how wide, how long. Some of these foundation stones for this, uh, for the temple. And Jesus said it's all going to be destroyed. And you think about, you know, that these stones, some of these weigh hundreds and hundreds of tons. Well, let's dig in. Thanks, Casey. Well, let's dig into the chapter. Uh, we got a, a lot, a lot to say. A lot we won't say um, because it, it, we are going to 
talk about the tribulation period. But let's begin reading uh, verse uh, 1 and 2 of, of 24. It says, Jesus came out from the temple and was going away with his disciples and came up to the point of the temple build, came, out, came up to point out the temple buildings to him. And he said to them, do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. And uh, this was a temple that uh, Herod had built. It was very fancy, very opulent. Um, and Jesus said it's going to be destroyed. Uh, the disciples were kind of ooing and eyeing over the, over the temple. Uh, as they looked from the Mount of Olives, you can clearly see it and, and the details of it. Um, and again, you know, you, you, these huge stones um, and how they moved them and how they placed them is just crazy to think about the, the engineering piece of it. You guys will get to see it in the month uh, and um, it'll be, uh, be incredible. Uh, and Jesus said it's, it's going uh, to be destroyed. And sure enough, in 70, uh, 70 A.D., it was destroyed. Uh, the Romans came in and, and totally uh, destroyed it. Um, uh, Ezekiel would, would foretell in the Old Testament that the glory of God would depart from the temple. Um, and, uh, and that's what happened. Um, Let's go on to verse, uh, oh, I didn't read verse 3. Okay. Uh, verse 3. Uh, verse 3 says, As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? So they're sitting on the Mount of Olives, and they're having this discussion. Turn over to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Keep your hand in Matthew. Go over to Acts, chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 4 through 6. The disciples propose a question. So now, fast forward a few days. That's the setting here in Acts. Fast forward a few days. They're on the Mount of Olives again. And what is the discussion? Let's read uh, Acts 1, verses 4 through 6. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. For the Father has promised, which he said, You heard from me. For John the Baptist with water, uh, we'll baptize with water, uh, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is this, is it at this time you are restoring your kingdom to Israel? And so you have the same question proposed uh, by the disciples again. And, and so I just wanted to to point that out that it uh, wasn't many days later. And, and again, they're still asking this question, when is the time? Uh, let's go back to the book of Matthew, and let's back up a few chapters. Matthew 13. He's having a discussion here about the wheat and the tares. And he introduces this idea, the end of the age. Uh, 13, verse 39. It says, And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. So earlier in Jesus' teaching, uh, multiple times, he introduces this idea of the end of the age. The end of the age. And so they want to know, when, when is this going to happen? So they come to Jesus with this question, what, when is this going to happen? And again, they were confused. They thought 
uh, they thought that his coming was, uh, and that he would rule and reign, would take place in this first coming. Uh, and they, um, they were like so many other people. So now let's look at the answer that Jesus gives them. And it's a fairly lengthy answer. And we're going to read down through a few verses, and then we'll come back um, and talk about some things. Uh, verse 3, or uh, verse 4, I'm sorry, uh, of chapter 24. It says, And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you. As we go through this chapter, count how many times you see the word misleads you. Verse 5, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not frightened for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. In various places, there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And at that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many because lawlessness is increased. Most people's love will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole earth as a testimony to the nations. And then the end will come. So it gives them the answer. All these things are going to take place, and then the end will come. So let's kind of walk through a little bit of this. And again, there's a lot of details we could go into. Um, uh, We just, for time's sake, uh, don't have it today. Um, Verse 4, he talks about, the deception. Um, hold your place in Matthew. Let's flip over to Daniel. Daniel uh, foretold of this. And this is just one example. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And what we read about today, you'll see a lot played out in the Old Testament, a lot in Daniel, a lot in Revelation. If you have a map of the end times, uh, this will help, help you explain some of the things you're reading about today. Matthew 9, 27 says, and again, this is speaking of the Antichrist. He will make a firm covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he will stop, put a stop to sacrifice and grain offerings, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who will make desolate. And again, Daniel is referencing the Antichrist and what his role will be in the tribulation there. Uh, And there'll be this deception that uh, people um, will look, he'll make a treaty with, they'll make a treaty with the Antichrist. Uh, and And then there for a time there will be peace. Um, but um, as we, we have read the back of the book, it doesn't go well. Um, and, uh, and, they will, and many will say, I am the Christ. And he will, the Antichrist uh, will uh, present himself as the Christ. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the things about the Antichrist, one of the things about Satan uh, that we know um, is Satan, uh, Satan is always counterfeit counterfeiting the truth. And how do we know what the truth is? How do we know what, the, what, a, or what a counterfeit is? I mean, how do we know what, a, what if something is a counterfeit? How can we tell? 
It's in the word. We have to know what the truth is. Uh, if uh, one of the things that the FBI does when it when it looks for counterfeit money and, and studies it, it, it looks at the real thing. It doesn't look at, at the counterfeit. So then when the counterfeit comes along, then, uh, then they can see those, those uh, inconsistencies. And so you have to know what, what the word says, and then uh, those uh, deceptions uh, will be pointed out, uh, and you won't be, be deceived. Verse uh, 6 talks about there will be wars and rumors of wars. Um, and the yet, and, and it says at the end of that verse, but that is not the end. So you'll hear about these wars and rumors of wars, but again, it's not the end yet. And uh, somebody, uh, one of the things I, I either heard or read this week, uh, over the last 5,000 years, there have been 200 major wars uh, that have taken place. And, and just to kind of reflect on what believers thought, especially those, some of you that have lived through World War II, you know, and, and uh, you, you, you read this verse, wars and rumors of wars, and, and then World War II happens. And you think, well, is this, is this it? And we've seen this play out down through history over and over again, uh, wars and rumors of wars. And again, he's telling his disciples that that's not the time yet. The end is not yet. Um, and so, uh, but we need to be aware of that. There, there, are, there are wars taking place today. Uh, and and uh, China is meeting with Russia and, and uh, you know, and you're like, could this be? You know, the stage is being set, so to speak, uh, and, and it's cool uh, to look at and study, uh, uh, but uh, ultimately, uh, we don't know uh, the timing of things. Uh, verse 7 points out that there will be famines and earthquakes. Uh, are, there, are there famines today? There's famines going on today. Are there earthquakes? There was just one Monday in Morocco, uh, 6.8, I think I wrote down. I, but it was a pretty huge magnitude. Uh, and, and so uh, these things are constantly happening. Um, and, and these are some, and as we go through these things, these are kind of, these are some signs that Jesus is pointing out to his disciples. Because uh, they want to know when is the end coming? When are you coming back? And so Jesus gives them these signs uh, to look for. Uh, verse 8, um, he describes these things. He says they're kind of like the beginning of birth pains, uh, and so, which I know nothing about, but the ladies in the room, uh, do you plan them out on a calendar? No. <laughs> And, and they come out of nowhere, don't they? They come out of nowhere, and they're fun, Tommy says. Tommy says they're fun. <laughs> uh, and, and as they increase in frequency, what does that mean? Getting near. Getting near. And, and the same is true about the coming of Jesus. As the frequency of these things happen, the end is near, and Jesus uh, gives them that example there in verse, uh, verse number nine, or verse number eight, I'm sorry. Uh, verse nine and 10 uh, talks about persecution. He's talking about they'll hate you. They will kill you. Uh, I was rem remembering back. Uh, and some of you are old enough and watched it. Do you remember the movie The Thief in the Night? And do you remember the guillotine scene? Yeah. yeah I was thinking about that. Uh, oh, yeah, there will be persecution. And, and that movie is just, again, it's just a representation. We don't know if it's going to be a guillotine. Uh, we joke about these stickers being <laughs> the mark of the beast. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but there will be persecution. Um, and again, thinking through, 
I, I think Jesus is talking about the Jews, but we know uh, as we study on in the Bible, in the end times, in the tribulation, uh, that there will be persecution uh, for the believer. Um, and uh, verse 10 says that uh, many will fall away. There are a lot of people that uh, claim to be Christians. A lot of people claim to know the Lord. But when the going gets tough or there's a little bit of persecution, do they stick around? No, they don't stick around. They'll fall away. Um, and they'll betray one another. Uh, they will turn uh, their friends in, their family in. Um, uh, and Jesus says that this, this is going to happen, uh, that they'll hate one another. Uh, and so, uh, and, it, and it's interesting to think too, so they're having this discussion on the Mount of Olives. What's going to happen the next couple days after this discussion? Yeah, uh, Judas. Uh, Judas is going to betray him, you know. And what is running through their minds? You know what I'm saying? They're just like, wow, uh, to kind of put those things together, you know. Verse, uh, verse 11, again, talks about there will be false prophets, those that uh, they're not the Antichrist, but they're, they're those that are, are teaching something other than uh, the Word of God. It sounds close but it's not the real thing. Uh, it's very misleading. Uh, if, what's that? And it's been happening a lot. It's been happening a lot, and it's been happening down through the ages. It happens today. Uh, if you get a chance, if you have access to Netflix, I think it is, American Gospel is a documentary, and just really eye-opening uh, how false teachers have come in and it appears that they're doing the work of the Lord, that they're sharing the gospel. But as you watch that documentary and as you compare what they're saying to the word of God, uh, a total, total contrast there, total contrast. Uh, and a lot of people are being swept up uh, in, in, in this false, false teaching and uh, it was interesting to have a conversation with uh, Paul uh, Finkel, who's in, in Africa, because a lot of the false teaching you hear about in America is being taught over there. And, and, and he's had to battle that. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, missionary, yeah. No, uh, no, uh, but the, the, false, the false teaching has spread over there uh, because of technology. You know what I'm saying? They have access to these false teachers through books, uh, 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 books that, you know, that we've read or are no longer interested in, uh, and then they get resold over, overseas. And, then, and so, uh, again, this false right. Are teaching the truth and and uh, yeah and so, and they're confronted, yep. And so they've got to retrain people, you know, because you know their limited Bible knowledge. They think, well, this is what the Word of God says, you know, and and it's not. And it's the reason they think that is that they've listened to this false teaching, uh, that they've either heard on, on on through technology or through a book that they have read, and so uh, yeah. Send your money and plant some seeds. Real quick. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, I had a, a, a talking about mis, misleading and, and, and how in our personal Bible study, uh, uh, it's real easy to get off. Uh, so it was interesting. I had a professor, uh, it, was, it was interesting. He taught the book of Hebrews and he had the whole book memorized. Uh, but anyway, when he would sit down to study a passage, uh, he would have a Bible, he would have a dictionary, um, but he wouldn't have a commentary. Uh, and I thought that was interesting. Uh, and uh, he had one other thing, and, and it escapes my mind, uh, but I just throw that out because a lot of times, you know, we, we add commentaries and things, and, and then we get misled, and, and so uh, it's, it's, Tom, yeah. Yeah, language changes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, uh, Tom. There about language. Language changes and and what things uh, mean. Uh, so. Uh, moving, moving right along. We've got uh, we're in verse twelve. We're hoping to get to thirty one today, so we'll see. <laughs> so we will, because uh, I told Adam where to study. <laughs> and so, <laughs> oh, and there will be lawlessness. Uh, uh, the people's uh, love will grow cold. What did uh, what was Wes's comment on Sunday about guns? Anybody remember? They haven't changed. Guns haven't changed. People have changed, you know, and so I, I thought that was, was an interesting uh, take on that. Uh, those that endure, uh, he says, those who are the ones that will be saved. Uh, verse 14, uh, there will be wor worldwide preaching of the gospel. Right now they say there's about 2.4 2 billion Christians in the world, and that's a very loose uh, grouping. Um, but there are how many billions of people in the world? You know, it's eight, up to eight billion. Yeah. So a big, a big, uh, big disparity. Uh, I think about uh, there's over 2,000 languages or dialects that don't even have the Word of God in their language yet. Uh, and so in Revelation, when you read about the marriage supper of the Lamb, and there'll be some there from every tribe, every kindred, every language, uh, and you you just wonder, you know, uh, you know, and people talk about, well, the end is here, and then you think about, well, all these people haven't heard yet. Uh, and, and, and Jesus uh, tells his disciples, worldwide, you'll see this happening, that there will be, uh, there will be the preaching of the word of God. And so we've kind of very quickly gone through some things. 
uh, deceptions, wars, famines, persecution, false prophets, um, the preaching of, of the gospel. And that, and then at the end of 14, it says, then the end will come. So all these things take place, then the end will come. And that's a very simple answer, but it's a very complex answer as well. Let's move on to 15. We're going to read 15 down through 28, and then we'll come back and talk about some things. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get things out of, of that ho- out of that are in the house. Whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. But pray, but pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on a Sabbath. So then there will be great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Unless those days have been cut short, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him. For false Christs, false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have, I have told you in advance, so that if they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east, and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Let's uh, kind of look at a few things. Uh, and again, we're just kind of hitting some high things. A lot could be said. Uh, verse 15 talks about this uh, abomination of desolation. Well, what is that? We read about that in Daniel chapter 9 there, 9-7. Uh, um, back in Jewish history, um, uh, you had Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, do you, does anybody remember what he did? Antiochus Epiphanes. So you think back to your Jewish history. What did he do? Very similar thing. Uh, And so as you try to understand what is this abomination of desolation, Antiochus Epiphanes gives us a little picture of what's going to happen. He was the guy that, remember, he sacrificed a pig on the the altar uh, in in the temple there and and made the priests eat eat the pig. Uh, And then he was also a persecutor of the Jews, slaughtered a lot of Jews. Um, And as we think about the Antichrist, He's going to do the same thing, but on a grander scale, Antiochus set up an idol to be worshipped, an idol to Zeus, but the Antichrist is going to set up an idol, but it will be to worship who? Himself. He's going to set up a a thing. Revelation refers uh, to him as the beast coming out of the sea, that this abomination of desolation. and uh, uh, and it's interesting too. In fifteen, he said, "Let the reader understand." Uh, and and it's speaking again of those that will, those in the future that will be reading this. Uh, and uh, uh, verse sixteen, what's his answer to this? Jesus says that they are to what? Flee. Flee, go to the mountains, protect yourself. 
Protect yourself. If you're on the housetop, don't go through your house and gather things. Go quickly. It's kind of like a fire. You don't go back into a burning house and get your jewelry, do you? You don't. You just, you just get out of there. And that's, that's the type of flea that he's, he's talking about uh, uh, to flee. Um, verse uh, 21 uh, talks about this great tribulation. Uh, and, um, and it'll go from bad to worse. Um, and it's something that they've never seen. Um, and uh, you think about the turmoil that they witnessed in their life, the Romans coming in and occupying their land. Uh, it's just a little glimpse of what's, what's going to happen uh, and how bad things are. And those of you that lived through World War II and, and all the atrocities, you know, those are just a little glimpse. Uh, you think about all the Jews. Uh, uh, I had the chance years ago to, to go to Poland uh, and stand in that chamber. And they, they were, the Jews were gassed. But that's just a small, as you think about that atrocity, it's just a small a small thing, um, tribulation will, will go from bad to worse. Um, and again, verse 22, he talks about the elect. And again, I, I, think, I think he's speaking to the Jews here um, based, based on this chapter. But like somebody said, when we get to heaven, we can realize that we were wrong. <laughs> so, uh, was that Roger Campbell? Kurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse, uh, again, verse 24, talking about the false Christ and the prophets. They're going to arise and they show great signs. As you think back in the Bible, did, uh, did false prophets, did they ever show great signs and wonders? Yeah, you go back to Exodus. You know what I'm saying? And Pharaoh and his ma ma magicians, were they able to replicate some of those things? Were they not? You know? Um, and that's what we're going to see. Um, and so um, don't. Don't be misled. Verse 27 talks about, describes it, the coming as lightning. Uh, the east, uh, as it comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming uh, of the Son of Man be. A um, couple weeks ago, we had quite a storm. Uh, and uh, there were, uh, if, I, if my memory was correct, 1,200 lightning strikes. Within a 20, 30-minute period, uh, it just lit up the sky. I forget who was telling me they stayed up. Was it you, Bonnie, that you and Clark stayed up and watched the lightning? <laughs> <laughs> They're laying in their bed. Tornado's coming. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you think about, he uses that analogy of lightning so they would understand. Uh, that you'll be able to see the coming of, of, of the sun. Uh, verse 28, he quotes uh, Job there. Uh, and again, uh, um, and this could allude to, um, this could be uh, the Battle of uh, Armageddon in the Valley of Megiddo, um, a fairly big valley. Maybe you guys will get to see that here in a month. Um, you know, and just to think about the expanse of that huge valley, and it says the blood will flow as high as a horse's mane. Uh, and you think about all the death uh, that will go on in the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, and, and not to get off in the weeds, um, but it's cool to look at things uh, because on the Euphrates River is a dam uh, built years ago, but they have the ability to uh, stop the water on that river 
And so as it talks about them coming from the north down into Israel, uh, you know, we can see little things take place, kind of the setting of the stage, you know, uh, for the Battle of Armageddon as, as the world uh, gathers together um, to, to defeat, um, and I forget where in my notes I put it. Maybe I didn't write it down. Um, you know, we look at the United Nations. People thought, well, when the United Nations started years and years ago, is this the re revived Roman emperor, uh, empire? Um, you know, but then uh, we have more than 10 nations in the United Nations, you know, and, and now you see the, the war in Ukraine and, and the role the, that the United Nations has played, and, and it's not very effective. And, and so you wonder if that's the beginning of them dissolving and you have uh, Britain uh, leaving uh, the United Nations and, and different countries talking about leaving. Uh, and and it's, so it's, it's cool to look at those things around us, you know what I'm saying, and, and see how there's bits and pieces uh, of things coming together. Uh, but again, it may not happen in our lifetime. It may happen. We, we don't know. Um, Let's go on to verse 29. But immediately after the tribulation, so again, so we've gone through the tribulation period, and if you want to go home and read Revelation and read about all that seven years, um, that's what this is talking about. So this is at the end of the tribulation. Of uh, those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give up its light and the stars will fall from the sky. And the powers of heaven will be shaken, and the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and will gather together the elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. So the question back in verse 3, when are you coming? And he gives the answer there in verse 29. It'll be after the tribulation. Will be his second coming where he'll come back and he will set up his kingdom and he will rule and, and reign. Um, and so all those things that... Uh, that were foretold by Isaiah and Jeremiah and, and Zechariah, and I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, uh, as they prophesied about that in the Old Testament, you see that uh, taking place. So Jesus answers the disciples their question and tells them this is when it's going to happen. It gives them the, the answer. Uh, gives them the answer. It's not the answer they're looking for. Uh, <laughs> Uh, verse, um, verse 31, uh, why, is, why is there the need to gather the people? Why is there the need? Why is the trumpet call go out as it did in the Old Testament when the priest would blow the horn and it would gather the people together? Why is there the gathering of people? Because go back to verse 16. What did he tell them to do? Told them to flee, to flee. And so now there's, there'll be the gathering, and they'll gather uh, the elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. And so uh, there'll be the gathering. Uh, so two minutes to spare. <laughs>